All right, g'day, and welcome to the new channel, Dana Made, unofficial, which I gave lots of thought. Okay, firstly, massive thank you to everyone who's jumped straight across and subscribed. Uh, pretty overwhelming, it's pretty awesome, um, but what it sort of tells me is most of you are happy to hear more of these talky talky videos. I'm gonna spend a bit more time talking about things and try and break down a lot of the questions that I get frequently, just to throw those in for those who are trying to learn a few things and learn from the things I've done over the last six years. So, here we go. So I will jump from me talking here to me talking in the parts of the video that I might have filmed several months ago, um, but hopefully we'll get the gist in total. I made this little side table many, many years ago. It slowly gets moved around the house in different spots. It's been used for all different things, but it's done its time. When I made this, I can't remember how much I did to the timber when I just used to slap the glue on and hope for the best. So I'm gonna bust this down, smash it basically, and then I'll use that timber some other way, somewhere, who knows. Cool. So it actually took a fair bit to smash it apart. It has been held together by screws, but as you can see, the glue I used back then, it was more psychological. It was not doing much at all. That's basically to split the glue line. You can also see these laminations. I've not planed or sanded or cleaned those up at all. Pretty much just slapped a heap of cheap PVA on and laminated them together. In a lot of my videos I back then, I would say I'm not relying on the glue bond itself, I would build in structure in other ways. So in this case, holding it all together with screws was just fine, but the lamination itself, it has not come apart. This is indoor furniture, so that cheap PVA glue was fine. Now saying that, uh, back when I made this, that four litre bottle of cheap PVA glue was only about $25. It was a quarter of the price of the next expensive glue. Uh, I notice it's now nearly 40 bucks. So for me, it's only another 20 bucks just to get type on. So it's really not worth going back for that stuff. For me, anymore. It is still fine. Clean the faces of your timber up as best as you can. It's gonna do the job. Keep it out of the weather, obviously, and it'll all be good. The value in this chunk of wood, basically from this little side table, is all those chunks that are still laminated together really well, I want the side grain of all of those chunks. So the plan will be to slice them up into thinner veneers to stretch that effect across this entire project. Okay, so here we go, no script, just me talking shit. Now, what I wanna do is try and establish how long, say, one of these little projects takes me, obviously how much time I put into it, what I should charge, etc. These are the last bits of pallet lamination I've got from that broken side table, which I broke to have a look at the glue inside. Perfect for what I want to do with these little signs. Thinking back to that video, was it worth it, where I broke down 20 pallets and glued them all together to create all the slabs to establish how much a chunk of pallet wood cost me in time. Let's assume these leftovers are about one of those slabs. And I established that one of those slabs took about 40 minutes per slab. So let's remember that. The plan now is I'm going to cut a heap of thick veneers, laminate these veneers onto this bit of leftover ply to see how many of those shop signs I can get out of this. So there's potentially six signs in this if I can get it covered in pallet wood lamination. I'll just keep going until I achieve that. And this is sort of the videos that I would like to put on the new channel. Those who are basically interested in what I'm doing, break it down a bit more, and hopefully you get something of use out of my shenanigans. I'm restoring those chunks into those thin veneers. So whatever the width of that chunk was, I set the table sort of that, and then I'll cut those down to size. That's all the smaller chunks. I'm not going to re-laminate those together just to get more side grain. What I'm gonna do is turn those ones on their side and re-saw them across the face of the board. So I'll have a combination of veneer and 
normal boards. So I get a bit of a palette puntery effect. And it'll actually stretch all of this material even further. So what I'm doing here is just squaring off all the edges. I am going for this brick laying technique, so I don't want any of those little 45 degree mitre cuts on each of those veneers. So a quick clean up, so this goes together square and smooth. I'm not creating equal size bricks though. That's where you get a lot of loss in your pallet bricks or, or your veneer. I'm going for a very random staggered brick effect, which fits nicely into the rustic charm category. And all you need to do is cut a few of those veneers into roughly the first half brick, and that'll set you up for your stagger. Away you go. Randomize it as much as possible. I'm trying not to get the same veneer back to back or side by side, um, just so it looks random. So in this one, I'm gonna do two techniques for laminating veneers down onto say the piece of ply first one i'll use my vacuum bag now these bags are available from your skateboard making shops like raw rocket um, or woodworking shops they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes so i am i am limited on what i can get into my bag um, so i'm just going to trim the ply down into the dimensions i need that'll work for the project i'm going to do but what i also do is i'll stack two up at a time um, you just got to be careful to make sure no veneers move around once they go into the bag or you'll have some out of whack. Not too concerned, if they are out of whack on this project, it's actually going to work out okay with the theme of these things. So with my ply now cut to size, I'm just again going to randomise and start that brick laying technique. I've got two longer boards which are going to go into the bag and then two smaller boards and I'm going to show another technique shortly on clamping those up. No regrets! And just quickly, these vacuum press bags are actually a really versatile clamp to have in your shed. It's not just about sticking veneers onto things or making skateboards. You can use those to clamp all sorts of boards together to create all sorts of stock. Um, you're getting an amazing amount of pressure um, inside of that bag. So for example, you wanna make some chunky beams, you've only got two by four stock, Laminate them together, stick them in your bag. If you don't have many clamps, these bags do the exact same job really well. So my second clamping technique is just using a press. Um, so I've got these big chunks of wood, which I call my pony press, which um, the reason they're so chunky is I combine these with some heavy duty sash clamps that I use to press broken skateboards together, which do need that additional pressure to encourage those skateboards to bend and become flat again. Um, however, just using a couple of chunks of wood and say half a dozen F clamps, you've got yourself another way to clamp up all sorts of stock. And again, as long as nothing moves, it works really well. I'm about an hour and a half to do everything you've seen so far, plus 40 minutes for say every slab of pallet wood that I was using. And this project could also be super simple just using the face side of the pallet boards, like really rustic nail holes and all that sort of stuff. Mix it up. There's another option, so I'll see how these go first, because I think that looks cool. Okay, all right.
It's hot. Quick chat about the economics of glue. Now, these four panels only used about that much, about 100 mils of glue. That more than justifies what these scrap wood project panels um, are going to make. Glue is one of those things that can be a bit of a deterrent because it does seem expensive and you can start to rip through it. I just decided early on, I knew I was gonna use a lot of glue because I do a lot of lamination. So that's just one of the things I've built into the cost of doing this out here. Now, what you can do is use the cheap stuff. The Bunnings four liters is about $40 now compared to 60, 70, $80 of tight bond. And again, if you get those laminations as clean as possible, they're gonna be pretty strong and do the job. Keep in mind, if they don't do the job, you're gonna slice them down and then glue them onto a piece of ply or make them stronger some other way. Glue. How good? How good glue? So what I'm actually making in this video is some more of the Bill and Ted be excellent to each finger signs. I'm gonna have about a half a dozen of these ones for sale on my website. This isn't a CNC video either. I, this is just what I'm doing to use this stock. This video is more about the technique of stretching your pallet wood further and further um, to make up whatever you want to do. So you can see by these panels, they could then be used in all sorts of furniture. Um, you might be building pallet signs, decorative walls, all sorts of things. Boxes, whatever. Where you want the nice stuff on the outside, but the other side can be some dodgy old ply. But in total, you've got a nice, strong chunk of wood. So I can't actually remember how much time I was up to. It's back in the video somewhere. Uh, however, each of these signs only takes about 20 minutes to cut each. Uh, then I give them a quick clean up, I whip up some epoxy, I pour that in, it gets flattened off, sanded, cleaned up. Not heaps of time when you're batching them out. So um, I think these are quite a decent little product if they do prove popular to have on my website. Um, and also that I don't get a cease and desist if I'm not allowed to use the Bill and Ted image itself, even though I've got a parody, so. So pricing, I'm sure I've actually settled on a price by the time this video has been published. Again, it's a very limited market. They are pitched at other woodworkers to have something stupid in their shop. <laughs> I didn't accurately log all the time, but I'd at a guess probably say it is only taken maybe three or four hours total to make all these signs. So um, in small batches like this, again, have the CNC working for me in the background and then doing small tasks like routing off the edges, sanding, finishing when I've got nothing else to do or I'm waiting for some glue to dry, all those sorts of things, just so I can start to increase the productivity time I have here in the shed. Um, it is a little bit more limited for me these days out here, so I am really putting an emphasis on valuing my time out here um, to make the most of it. So that's all I have to say about that. Okay, here we go. Uh, six signs are on my website. Probably be the last Bill and Ted 
products uh, until I make sure that the parody is a legit thing and I can't get into strife. So, okay, so that is about it. I am not going to ramble on too much uh, in these initial videos, uh, just till I sort of get a feel for how I want this channel to move along. Um, again, thank you very much for everyone that has subscribed. Hopefully you are watching a little bit more of these style videos and you just want to have a bit of a watch and a listen and get a few tips along the way. So this is pretty much what it's going to be all about. Uh, I am hoping to do a shed tour um, soon. So, and as you can see, I'm broadcasting live from the new table saw, which is very exciting. Uh, it's finally here. It's not working yet. Um, I need to go and buy a 15 amp power cord and I'm waiting on a couple of saw blades and I just want to make sure that I've had a good read of the instructions. Okay, um, catch you later. Yeah.